So, in this regard, let me take uh, the example. Let me take an example. We'll, we'll learn this one through an example. Okay. Let us take the example as uh, x minus y plus 3z is equal to 9 <clears throat> 4x plus 2y plus z is equal to 9 minus 6x minus y plus 2z is equal to 2x. So, we need to solve this uh, system of equation. Okay, so we'll go step by step. Uh, first, let us go for the uh, Gaussian elimination that we saw in the yesterday's class. Let me take the matrix A with all these coefficients. That is 2, minus 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, minus 6, minus 1, 2. Okay. So let us go for the uh, the pivot element. Let us take 2 as the pivot element by taking 2 as the pivot element and uh, what we can do here is uh, we can add uh, I mean the second row plus minus 2 times the first row so this is in fact R2 is equal to uh, R2 plus minus 2 times R1 and we'll go one step at a time. So first row doesn't change. Second row, first element becomes 0. Second element becomes minus 2 into minus 1 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Third element, second row, 2 into 3 equal to 6, minus 6, 1 minus 6 is equal to minus 5. And third, third row, let us not change here. I'll write another step for that. And that is nothing but um, three times the first row. R3 is equal to uh, R3 plus three times the first row. So here we have first row doesn't change. Two minus one, three. Second row remain as it is. Zero. Four. Minus five. 
first element of the third row becomes zero. There is three times the first row plus third row. So three times the first row is uh, here. This becomes minus three, minus one, minus three. That is minus four. And uh, three times the first row nine uh, plus two. That becomes eleven. That's right. Okay. And uh, now our target is to make the lower diagonal zero. That is, it's an upper triangular matrix. That is what uh, we learned yesterday from the uh, Gaussian eliminations method. The upper triangular matrix, that is what our target is. So in this regard, the next step is Uh, the next step is we need to add the third row with the second row. So R3 becomes R plus R2. So that will ensure that uh, the load. Uh, uh, that will ensure us an upper triangular matrix. So first row doesn't change. Second row also doesn't change. And the third row, first element doesn't change. Second element becomes zero. And the third element becomes 11 minus five. That is equal to six. So now we have a matrix where all the lower triangles are zero and that's what the upper triangular matrix. Now from here, we'll go for the elementary matrix. Uh, elementary matrix. The objective here is to uh, write this uh, matrix A in the form of some elementary matrices. It's something like, uh, um, let us say the elementary matrix is E. So E times A gives you the upper triangular matrix U. E times A gives you the upper triangular matrix U. Okay. So, this one, this particular operation, the first, very first operation, this actually resulted in uh, A is equal to uh, this matrix, this one, this matrix. So this I can write, this A is equal to this matrix, this I can write it as E1, let us say E1 is my first elementary matrix times A that gives you this particular uh, intermediate matrix. Let me call this one as U1. U1. How can I get this one? So elementary matrix, the property here is, uh, it's like uh, we have the diagonal element as one,
and this is being multiplied with the matrix A to minus 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, minus 6, minus 1, 2, sorry. Just a second, this gets hanged actually. Just a minute. Yeah, it started responding. Yeah, that's it. So, how do I get this uh, E matrix, E1? How do I get this E1? How, what are, what the values should be of the rest of the, diagonal elements are, these three elements, that's okay, one. What about the rest, six elements? how much it should be multiplied with the A matrix so that I get this E1 matrix. <clears throat> it's very simple. Simple in the sense, the only thing that you need to take care is this two. This is important here. How much you have multiplied, that is minus two you have multiplied. So what is need to be done here is, uh, it's like uh, uh, what exact operation we have done root 2 is equal to root 2 plus minus 2 times row 1. So let us first talk about row 1 itself. Row 1 will not change. Row 1, 2 minus 1, 3. It's not going to change. How it's not going to change? Because the first row multiplied by the first column gives you the first element. First row multiplied by the second column gives you the uh, second element of first row and so on. So this is possible only when this element is 0, this element is 0. So 1, 0, 0, when it is multiplied with first row, first column of matrix A, first column of matrix A, it gives you the first element, 2. 1, 0, 0 multiplied with the first uh, second column, it gives you minus 1. 1, 0, 0 multiplied with the third column, it gives you 3. So 1, 0, 0 placing in E1 doesn't affect the first row. What about the second row? What about the second row? Second row is minus 2 times the first row plus the second row. So when it comes to the second, I mean one component is second row, other component is minus two times R1. So in order to get the second row, you need 0, 1, 0. But at the same time, you want to add minus two times R1. So that is possible only when you place minus two here, zero here. So minus two 
one zero when this row is multiplied with the first column you get minus two times the first element plus the second element and so for the second column so for the third column and third row doesn't change so this is again zero zero one so this is what the elementary matrix e1 you got okay now come to the this particular step come to this particular step here again the same thing we can write this particular matrix let me say u2 this is what we can get it's like e2 times e1 times a is equal to u2 okay now tell me what is e2 the only point that you need to take care is 3 and look at this we are not uh, we are not uh, interested in r1 we are not interested in r2 that means not interested means we are not altering r1 we are not altering r2 only effect is in r3 that is to with respect to r1 so obviously it's a diagonal all the principal diagonal elements are 1 1 1 first row you are not touching second row also you are not touching only the third row third row is third row time uh, third row plus three times the first row so this is three zero that's it now come to this u3 this is u3 this i can write it as e3 times uh, sorry e3 times e2 times e1 times a is equal to u3 So now tell me what is E3? The first element, uh, first row doesn't change. Second row also doesn't change. However, the uh, third row, third row is uh, third row plus one time the second row. So here I have that's it. Sir, it will be zero one one, not zero one zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm changing that actually. This actually this thing doesn't respond properly. Look at this. And this also is uh, U3. Okay. So
Okay. So what I can do here now is uh, I can write. Uh, ultimately, I got U3, right? This U3 is nothing but U, the upper triangular matrix. Uh, that is what we have written here. E A is equal to U. So this E comprises E1, E2, E3. And this U, we have got it in a stepwise fashion, U1, U2, U3. And this U3 is the final U, right? This U3 is the final U. So this is what I can write as E3 times E2 times E1 times the matrix A is equal to U. This is what I can write. Okay. Just a second, that's again creating some trouble. Okay, now what's the next? Once we have got this one, E3, E2, E1, A is equal to U, I can, I can write this in this way. I'll take, uh, all this E3, E2, E1 uh, pre multiply with inverses and both on the left and right hand side. And this is what I can get. This is equal to U. Uh, I'll start from the left hand side, right? E3 inverse, E2 inverse, E1 inverse now the question is uh, what answer this three will give what answer this three will give so how do i calculate e1 inverse i have e1 i have e1 as uh, how much the e1 was Minus two times, uh, right? Like that it was. Yeah, minus two times. So one, zero, zero. Minus two, one, zero, 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 one. This is, this was E1. E2 was. That right now, yeah, that's correct. E2 is uh, 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, and E3 is equal to. One zero 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 one zero zero one one. So I have three matrices E one, E two, E three, and uh, they are all orthogonal matrices.
okay so a is equal to e1 inverse e2 inverse e3 inverse times u e1 e2 e3 we have here can we find out e1 inverse what is the e1 inverse the calculation is very simple write the diagonal elements as it is and all the off diagonal elements change the sign so this is how the inverse can be calculated for such kind of matrices in a very simple way so this becomes 2 0 0 uh, 1 0 0 0 e2 inverse is equal to 1 0 0 0 1 0 minus 3 0 1 e3 inverse is equal to 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 minus 1 1 okay Now let us multiply E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse. What do we get when we multiply E1 inverse times E2 inverse? What is the answer? The first row times first column. That answer is equal to 1. Diagonal element doesn't change when we multiply such kind of matrices. The first row, second column, that's equal to 0. This is also equal to 0. Second row, first column, the value is 2 here. Here it is 0. Third row, first column, this is minus 3, this is 0. And uh, now what is uh, basically if you see such kind of matrices if you are multiplying it's uh, it's like a i mean the diagonal element doesn't change only the off diagonal elements is uh, non zero off diagonal elements takes their position and zero takes their position i mean rest of the rest of the uh, elements becomes zero let me repeat uh, uh, diagonal element doesn't change diagonal element remains one principal diagonal element non-zero of diagonal elements take their position and rest of them becomes one uh, rest of them becomes zero sorry so here also the same thing this two when i am multiplying uh, one zero zero two one 0 minus 3 minus 1 1 now look at this this 2 this minus 3 and this minus 1 they have taken their respective positions here diagonal elements are 1 1 1 there is no change in that and other elements becomes zero now this is nothing but a uh, which matrix low triangular matrix so from here 
from here I can write this equation one if I write from one I can write that a is equal to l times u L times U is one zero zero two one zero minus three minus one zero two minus one three zero four minus five zero zero six. That is what a equal to l u. Now, the original equation, the system of equation is to be solved. And uh, solving this system of equation is not that difficult here. The fact that uh, we'll rewrite this equation. A is equal to L U or we have written earlier A X is equal to B. So what I will do here is I will write L u x equal to b and uh, this i will write it as l i'll make this u x as 1 l y is equal to b So this let us solve this. What is L? One zero zero two one zero minus three minus one zero. Y let me write it as uh, there I have written X Y Z. So let me write it alpha beta gamma this is nothing but uh, how much was that nine 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 twelve. 
So go for forward substitution. So we have alpha is equal to nine. Beta is equal to uh, two times alpha plus beta. So nine minus two times alpha. Nine minus two times alpha. So that is equal to minus nine. And gamma. Gamma is equal to I'm sorry, somewhere I've done a mistake. This is one, I think. This has to be one. Yeah. This has to be one. Gamma is equal to 12 minus plus 3 times alpha plus uh, beta. So that becomes uh, 9 into 3 is 27. 27 minus 9 is 18 plus 12 is 30. Alpha, beta, gamma becomes 30. Now we have y as 9 minus 9, 30. Now next is solve for ux is equal to y. ux is equal to y. So u is already given to you. 2 minus 1, 3, 0, 4 minus 5, 0, 0, 6, x, y, z. This is equal to 9 minus 9, 30. Go for backward substitution. Backward substitution. Z is equal to 30. Sorry, not Z equal to 30. 6 Z is equal to 30. Are equal to 5. You have uh, 4y minus 5z. 4y minus 5z is equal to minus 9. So from here you can get uh, y is equal to minus 9 plus 5z. How much? Twenty five minus nine, sixteen by four, four. Then you have two X minus Y plus three J. 
is equal to plus 9. So this implies x is equal to three uh, jed fifteen minus four is eleven nine minus eleven is minus two minus one so here you have the answer x y z is equal to minus one four and five So, we saw one example in, in yesterday's class and today's class and that's what I have been telling, it's like a deja vu. You guys have already studied all this, just a quick recap of the entire thing, but then please do expect one or two questions from this. LU factorization, this is quite important. And uh, you can practice few of the problems. Uh, some problems you can practice. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, next class, we'll be talking something new and try to understand some new concepts from this LU factorization itself. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.